Welcome to the build log number two video. In this video, I'll discuss the Y axis and all of its design parts. But before we continue, I just wanna say a big thanks to everyone who contributed in the commentary of the previous video. The common concern was the use of these aluminium tubes as the X axis shaft. Primarily, the bushing passing over the aluminium will scrape away a fine layer of aluminium oxide repeatedly, resulting in oxide dust building up, causing the bushing to stick. Another concern was the bushing should be made of a softer material than the shaft it's moving along, as the bushing should be the part to wear out over time and not the shaft itself. You also had great suggestions to mitigate these concerns, such as using uh, anodized aluminium uh, rods here and replace the steel bushing for a polymer bushing, such as an IGUS bushing. Um, well, after some hunting, I finally found a supplier of these aluminium tubes uh, anodized with a 10 millimeter diameter uh, and as a bonus it comes with a 2.4 millimeter thickness but unfortunately it didn't arrive in time for this video so I'll show it on the next one. I'll see how these self lubricating bushings perform on the anodi uh, anodized aluminium rods before jumping over to the IGUS bushings. To start off with the 623ZZ bearings have finally arrived from Banggood here they are here, and you can see the mistake I made in ordering the 608ZZ uh, flanged bearing. The size difference is absolutely huge in between them. Uh, the bearings are just going to be used as a pair uh, with the flanges sticking outwards so the belt can run in between the flange. And these will be used on the, on the XY joiner piece and also on the uh, XY frame as well for the belts to do a 90 degree turnover. And just to quickly demonstrate how these are going to work, these come with a 3mm internal diameter and I'll be using just an M3 screw as the shaft or axle for these bearings. So I'll slide over one each like that. Uh, just use a nut to screw them together. Nice and easy, and here's a belt, and you'll see if I run the belt in between, it's a perfect fit between the flanges uh, of those bearings, and there it is there, it's nicely nestled, nestled away, that's with the, uh, the teeth sticking out, mind you, if we turn it around, because some of the, uh, the belts will be on the inside, it still hugs the bearings quite well, so they're going to be used on the XY joiners and on all the idlers, basically. Here are the iterations of the XY joiners that I've designed for this new 3D printer. Starting from the left hand side is one of the earlier um, models I created. Um, what these all have in common are, they are to support obviously the uh, aluminium shaft on the X axis and they are also to house those uh, 623ZZ bearings inside them to allow the 90 degree turn for the GT2 belt to, um, to progress. Each one of these I've allowed for different mechanisms to mount to the Y-axis shaft. So this one I've allowed two uh, bearings quite widely spaced out. This one here only one bearing but allowing for the, uh, the longer 40mm uh, bearings that you can buy. And finally finishing on this design here being the final design that I'll be using. Um, the big difference here is I'm clamping the aluminium rod to this part rather than just using like a cable tie or something to just hold it in place with a tight fit because I've noticed if there's any play at all in with the shaft being able to twist in here it will twist and it won't run true along the along the rails the aluminium shaft has to be clamped down quite tight so i have uh, two 20 20 millimeter m3 screws here with nuts and the same on this side this side here is shorter than this side because i'm having to allow for the screw to go in for the uh, two 623ZZ bearings using another 20mm M3 screw as the axle for these two bearings and also a nylock nut to lock them in place otherwise as these are spinning if you just use a standard nut they may um, uh, come loose over time and the idea here is that the two belts will come out evenly uh, from this part and join up with the X carriage uh, parallel with the centre of the rods uh, the whole design is going to be around the belts having to be vertically stacked because that's how the X carriage is and that's how the belts will exit from this part. The same piece can be used on both sides of the X axis gantry. One will be placed this way and the other side will be placed this way. 
Uh, the way this mounts to the Y-axis shafts is just using a single LM8 UU bearing. I found just one of these is, is fine. I don't need two of them or even a, a long one. That simply slots uh, in the center there and just using a clamp, just such as this one here, straight over the top using uh, M3 by 20 millimeter screws to clamp that in place on all four, all four sides. Uh, and that is ready to go on the Y-axis. For the Y-axis rails on this new 3D printer, my intention is to use the existing hardened steel rails on my current Prusa i3 3D printer, but I can't cannibalize that printer just yet because I still need it functioning while I'm designing and printing the new pieces. So in the meantime, I found a, a local cheap supplier of these polished stainless steel rods uh, that I'll be using for the Y and the Z axis on the new 3D printer. And I just wanted to show you something interesting here. Um, while I was looking for eight millimeter uh, round bar, um, a lot of places didn't actually stock that size of eight millimeter. Everyone that I rang held 7.94 millimeters. Now 7.94 millimeters converted to Imperial is uh, 5 sixteenths of an inch. So that got me that got me wondering, even though I eventually did find a supply which did have the 8.00 millimeter diameter uh, stainless steel rod here for purchase, I was wondering about my current Prusa i3 and are these hardened steel rods actually 8.00 millimeters or are they 7.94? And one thing I want to show you here is here's my digital calipers. And if I can get this into shot, um, I'll show you the thickness of this rail here. You'll see it's 7.94 millimeters. So this is off my Y-axis on my Prusa i3. I think this is an imperial size rail, not a metric size rail. And here's an LM8 UU uh, ball bearing that's that will be sliding on the rail. So on the existing rail, it slides fine, of course. But you'll notice, and you've probably realized this with your own, well, some of you may have realized this with your own printer, the linear bearings are a bit loose. There's a bit of a, a wobble to them that you can hear. Um, I'll, I'll take a close up of that so, I, so you can see the actual uh, wobble on there. But if I now do that exact same test on this uh, locally sourced eight millimeter uh, rod using the same bearing, still slides up and down, no problem at all, but there is very little to no play or a way less play on this rod than there is on this rod and I'll just show you the diameter of this rod here if I can do two things at once eight millimeters so there you go I'm wondering if um, a lot of these printers that we're sourcing uh, are using imperial um, size rods rather than these eight millimeter metric size rods I can finally start mounting items to the aluminium extruded frame. Here we have one of the uh, stainless steel polished rods for the Y-axis. I already have the LM8 UU bearing suspended in between. To mount this rod to the frame, just a simple plastic clamp was designed to use to, to hold the uh, rod in place, one on this side and one on this side. And I also have another one of these Y-axis rods, of course, down at the bottom there, as you can see, which is identical to this one. Looking at the top of the frame now, I have the X gantry in front of us here. Even though I've inserted the aluminium rods into the XY joiner, I haven't uh, clamped these down because you need to adjust the length of these rods uh, between the rails. The uh, LM8UU bearings are already uh, sliding on the rails. And to install this, simply uh, put in the XY gantry on a diagonal like that. So one of them catches on this side, the other one will catch on this side and then move this straight and then from here you can slide back the uh, XY joiners on each side as the uh, XY joiners can slide on the rails because they're not clamped on, cl on currently and then once you have them in place and you're quite confident that the rails are perfectly aligned and and not binding up you can go ahead and clamp on the uh, LMAEU on this side and on this side and then also clamp uh, the uh, x-axis rails to the xy joiner. And 
here is the X gantry assembled on the XY joiners and attached to the Y axis. And as you can see, it moves very freely. There is no binding at all with this setup. I can move the X carriage, of course, back and forth. That's moving very freely. And also the Y axis. I can move the uh, X carriage diagonally from uh, right to left and from left to right. There's no binding there at all. I can move this back and forth very fast and there's no binding there either so hopefully this particular uh, mechanical setup will work just fine with the Core XY system. Well that's what I'm about to find out next. Thanks for watching.